if, uh, if you would like to stay for the question or if you can leave the room. Thanks. Okay. All right. Philo, is there any question? Let's start. Otherwise, it's, okay. it's noisy. How many ceremonial keys do you have at this point? How many ceremonial keys do you have? Um, not many. Maybe it's one another. C'è qualche domanda? Vogliamo cominciare? I think I do have one other. This is for the camera. Uh -huh. I don't know if there's any questions so much as it's just a big photo. Ecco, grazie. Hello. Hello. I do my question in Italian, so uh, I don't know if someone can I speak Italian or English. Um, you can speak Italian, but I won't understand a word. Okay. okay try in English if uh, you don't understand. Someone helps me. So I'm Virginia della Sala, and uh, I'd like to just to know what is the next challenge for Wikipedia right now, uh, and uh, uh, how do you feel? Uh, I, I can't. Ah. And the yeah. near future. Yeah, so the next challenge for Wikipedia, um, I would say, remains uh, to, uh, to continue to grow uh, Wikipedia in all the languages of the world. Uh, we're seeing a lot of growth in the languages of the developing world, and that's very exciting. Uh, there's also a lot of uh, wonderful uh, challenges around growing the community, about diversifying the community. This was the theme of my talk is uh, how we're so international uh, and we want to continue that. Is, oh, what kind of diversification when you talk so about we, we, we are still growing. Uh, we still have small communities in many parts of the developing world. Those are growing and that's something we're very excited about. We also are encouraging more women editors. We want to have a, a broader... Basically we want people from all walks of life because we know uh, that people come with their own uh, passions and perspectives uh, and people write about what they love and so we need to have everyone contributing to Wikipedia. Catherine, do you want to maybe to say something? No, I, <laughs> the funny thing is I've lost my voice too. Um, I, I would just agree with what Jimmy said. I think that the real challenge for us is you know, our mission is all of the world's knowledge. And we know that unless we have people that represent the whole world, it will be very challenging. So in order for us to truly achieve that mission, we need all people to contribute. And so it's a question of how do we continue to make this an inclusive place where everyone can find their role. Thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm Marco Mauta. I'm working for the National Public Radio in Italy. Um, what, to Italy, first of all. Um, I have a question about uh, the uh, sharing of the images of our cultural heritage. You know that a couple of days ago here, there was a, a meeting discussing uh, why Italy is one of the few countries in the world, few countries in the world that have some restrictions on the sharing of, of uh, images of our cultural heritage. So I, I was wondering if you have something to say from a global point of view. Mm. on this issue. Yeah, so for us, the, the fundamental purpose of Wikipedia is to share knowledge. And one of the important things to share knowledge about um, is various uh, public sculptures, public monuments, buildings, things like this. Uh, and so in general, we're opposed to restrictions on uh, those kinds of things. It's very important that we be able to document the world as it is and share that knowledge. I'm not an expert on Italian law, so I can't really comment specifically. I just know that the Italian chapter uh, has been working very hard. Uh, we have some uh, members of parliament who are attending the conference, uh, someone from the um, Ministry of Cultural Heritage, um, and we're trying to basically make sure that our voice is heard. Uh, too often in these kinds of debates, um, 
people forget about uh, the importance of sharing knowledge and of a community like their, ours, which is doing it in a, in a non-profit uh, educational way. Uh, and so we're hopeful. Uh, we think once people look at the issue, uh, they say, oh, well, naturally, this is obviously something that needs to be changed. Posso farla in italiano, poi la traducerei. Okay. No, la traduci tu, tanto è semplice. Buongiorno. Questo sì. Colombo, provincia. Le volevo chiedere che differenza c'è tra fare un, un, un incontro a Esino e uno a Città del Messico o a Londra. Uh, what's the difference between doing a meeting in uh, Città del Mes in uh, Mexico City and Esino? What's the big difference? The, the difference in the conference here yeah, versus Mexico conference. City? Um, well, it, in many ways it's the same. Uh, it's the same community and the same spirit. But in other ways it's dramatically different. Uh, Mexico City is one of the largest cities in the world. Um, it's, uh, it was um, a very distracting environment. Uh, there's lots of city things. And now here we're in this village. We felt the warmth of the local people um, who've invited us into their homes. Um, and so it's a completely different uh, atmosphere uh, in that sense. Sure, I'm, I'm happy to add another thought on Mexico and Italy. One thing that is similar, um, uh, which I would add, is that Italy has a remarkable cultural heritage that is very ancient and dates back a long time and really informs the culture that we're experiencing today. Mexico is also home to a similar deep cultural heritage. And so we're very privileged to go from a very different environment to this environment in the Sinolario, but to have that consistency that's so close to our mission, which is sharing and informing on these common cultural touch points that we have. Thank you. Franco Cavalleri, La Regione Ticino, Bellinzona. Wikimedia is about building bridges, but it looks like the world right now is more engaged in destroying bridges. Uh, and I mean, today's new Brexit, but also uh, groups of people like gender, religion, and other particular specific uh, issues. What's your idea? I mean, for me, I, as I said, the Wikimedia movement is about sharing knowledge, uh, and, and we're a powerful force for sharing knowledge. And knowledge is the path to peace, is the path to understanding. Uh, as I say, for many of the kinds of conflicts that we see around the world, there are real political choices that people need to make. And generally speaking, there are two sides to the story, and either choice could be valid. But I want those choices to be made in an atmosphere of reason and understanding, rather than an atmosphere of divisive hatred and rhetoric. Um, so. You know, for us, Wikimedia is in one sense not at all a political movement. Uh, we're a movement for knowledge, we're a movement for understanding. But within our community, we have a, a, a set of values around uh, trying really hard to peacefully interact. Uh, we, we try to do more than just fight with each other. There are many places online you can go and have an argument. At Wikipedia, hopefully, you're having a constructive dialogue and building something so other people can understand. Well, one thing that I would add is, as Jimmy, in addition to everything Jimmy said, is as divisive as the world seems today, even with the results of the Brexit, for example, those were very close results. So while we may have people who feel one way, we have a, a significant number of people who feel the other way. And I think what you see represented in the Wikimedia movement and in our community here is the other 50%, the 50% of people who feel more of a connection to each other than a difference, people who want to come together to collaborate. And that's really the spirit that we come to Wikimedia in. And that's why we have so many people from all around the world represented here today. One of my colleagues recently from Mexico told me that Wikipedia helps us build the tools for the future, not just because we're building an incredible educational resource, but because we're teaching people through participation how to collaborate, how to resolve their differences, and how to build shared understanding. Good morning. 
Um, so the question, I, I don't think they can hear you. The question is, uh, do I think Brexit can influence our work? Uh, you know, we work um, globally all around the world. We, we have volunteers in uh, virtually every country of the world under all kinds of different political systems. So uh, any one uh, political decision like this won't really uh, change uh, our movement and our, our goals. So. I don't think so. Um, okay. we'll, still, we'll still write the encyclopedia. We'll be here no matter what. Good morning, Mr. Weiss. And sorry if my, if my English is not perfect. Uh, before you spoke about the bridge that uh, Wiki is helping to, uh, to build in the world. And I think that in a certain way, we can see also the bridge that Wiki has built between the world and Esinolario, this is a little village. So, uh, I would like to ask you, uh, what do you think about of the heritage that Wiki is leaving to uh, Esinolario and to his people, the heritage, the, yeah, it's clear. I, I couldn't, I, I've missed a few words. So. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, for us it's a, it's, it's an amazing thing. So when, when I first heard, uh, because I'm not involved in the, in the committee that makes the decision of where to go, so I first heard uh, that we were going to a small village in Italy where the number of participants in the conference would be larger than the number of people who live in the town. I thought, oh, how is this possible? Where will we stay? And as it turns out, we're staying in people's homes and we're staying in the local hotels. And it's, an, it's a remarkable thing and obviously, it's had a, a big impact on our community, uh, this, this feeling of generosity, because we, we have a spirit of generosity in our community, sharing knowledge, but to have people actually share their homes with us is, is an amazing thing. Uh, and then obviously I think the people of Encino Lario would be a better place to say what is the impact um, on their town. Uh, I'm sure it's quite substantial this week anyway, to have uh, uh, people from all over the world uh, come to your town to talk about uh, their work on Wikipedia, so it must be remarkable. Following on from that, um, isn't one of the things that's going to come out of this that it will actually um, encourage other small communities to take on more ambitious projects and actually realize that they can do something like this? Mm -hmm. Isn't this the positive thing that we should be trying to promote from this conference. Yeah, this is one of the one of the concepts we have because w Wikipedians are working everywhere from their own homes and they're in small villages and they're in big cities and they're and they're everywhere. Uh, and so we realized oh, we shouldn't be always focused on only the big cities. Like people are doing amazing things in, in all parts uh, of the world. Uh, so yeah, I hope people hear about this and actually I would, I would very much recommend to any conference that is traditionally held in a big city, see if you can find a small village. It's an amazing, different experience and you know, you may, you may think, oh, I was in this conference and this conference, I, I don't remember the hotel, I don't remember much about it, you know, we'll remember this for the rest of our lives. So it's, it's quite remarkable. Thank you. Um, with the appointment of the Foundation's new Executive Director, congratulations Catherine, um, what, what are the top uh, two or three um, focuses moving forward of the Foundation, or, or have, I suppose it's a bit soon, perhaps you would be asking this question, but if um, there are answers to this question, or if it's not too soon, um, what, what are the, these focuses moving forward? So, I think this is a question best for Catherine. The one thing in this area that I wanted to say, just to be a little clear, uh, because I made a joke uh, during the ceremony about, oh, we were as surprised as anyone that uh, it made it sound a little bit like maybe we just on a whim decided one day. But actually, we've been through this very long process. Um, the, the search team has uh, interviewed uh, sort of every department at the foundation, all of the executives, the board members, uh, over, I think, 1,200, 1,600 interviews, uh, feedback from community members. And so we really did this huge process to figure out what it was that we wanted. Um, and there's, there's a children's book about this where this family is deciding to move and they think of everything they want in a house and it turns out it's where they live already. Uh, and we were very fortunate. We realized at the end of this long process uh, that we already had what we were looking for in our interim uh, executive director. In terms of her priorities going forward, um, obviously 
she's better placed to, to speak to that uh, than I am. I think that, excuse me, the, the first thing that we're going to be focused on is looking at building an inclusive vision that engages all of our community members, all of our affiliates, all of our partner organizations in setting a course for the next 10 years. We're now 15 years old. It's been a remarkable 15 years. I think we've accomplished more than we ever thought possible. And the question is, as we look around today from, the, from this village and uh, oh, <laughs> thank you. From this village in Sinalario, where do we want to be sitting in 10 years' time? Who do we want in the room? What celebration do we want? What accomplishments do we want to be celebrating? And how do we make sure as we move to that vision that every member of our community has a stake in it, but that people outside of our community, our next generation of community members, have a stake in it too and can find their place? So that's going to be, I think, the big project for us to take on. But in a very tangible way, Jimmy spoke today about making the community an inclusive, friendly space. And I think that that will be really getting down to work on that so that as we think about this long-term vision, we have a community that everyone can feel at home in. So, thank you. Is there any other questions? Uh, is it true you had um, Montessori education? Um, no, it, it's, a, it's a popular myth. Uh, so I went to a school that was influenced by Montessori, but it wasn't technically speaking a Montessori school. But I'm, I'm a fan, my children have all gone to Montessori schools. Uh, I think it's a fantastic uh, educational approach and very um, wiki-like in a way because it's, a, you know, there are different activities and you choose uh, what, you, what you choose to work on and develop on your own. Much like people at Wikipedia, you choose what you study and, and so forth, so, okay. yes. <laughs> As you know, in Italy, Wikipedia is very used by Italian students, but what happens sometimes is that when uh, uh, students uh, make uh, homeworks, the teachers, uh, the teachers say, uh, please don't copy and paste from Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so it, what, what, what would you like to suggest as the students and also to the teachers to use in a better way Wikipedia? Yeah. I, I always tell students, uh, don't cut and paste from Wikipedia because your teacher reads Wikipedia too. So they know what, they, they recognize it. Uh, of course, Wikipedia is a fantastic place uh, for students to go as a starting point, but it's never uh, the right ending point. It's a place to get oriented and learn the basics and then you can go deeper. So that's our advice to students. Okay, thank you. I think we're, oh, we we're finished. Oh, may, oh, okay, super. Uh, hi, this is Jens. I'm the founder of the Simple Show Foundation. We also support free knowledge and we focus on explaining videos. And we realize that um, video is becoming more and more important in learning and the perception of learners. Do you think that this general trend will also, in a technical and learning way, will affect Wikipedia in the future? And is it a challenge for you? Um, I, I don't think that people will turn away from text. Um, and so I think that we're complementary. Uh, and I think that one of, the, one of the fantastic things that we're seeing these days is a, is a real rise of uh, open access courseware, um, not just video, but also video and interactive elements. Um, and I view those as completely complementary uh, to Wikipedia. There's a lot of things that are um, better taught in a structured way. Uh, to prepare you to come back and read uh, Wikipedia. So uh, I think it's, it's, it's great that after Wikipedia, now we're seeing the, the explosion of a whole host of educational materials so that hopefully people can, in informal education, have fantastic resources freely available. Um, wow, that's, that's what it's all about. So Great, thank you. Okay. A strange question. Uh, okay. What does our politician uh, learn from Wikipedia community and Wikipedia uh, system? Um, what can politicians learn? Well, I can only just go back to the theme of my speech, and this is just my personal statement. Um, through Wikipedia, so I grew up in, in Alabama, uh, which can be, uh, you know, sweet home Alabama, uh, quite a parochial place, quite a closed place. Um, it's not that closed anymore, but traditionally it was and through Wikipedia I have met people from all around the world from all different cultures and at the end of the day people are people um, human beings all 
want to learn, human beings all want to care for their families, human beings all want peace, prosperity, and any rhetoric that politicians are using that denies those basic facts, that tries to treat people as evil, enemy, foreigners, uh, bad people, simply because they're different, is a tragic mistake, uh, and politicians should learn this. Thank you very much. I think uh, we can close. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.